Now I ask the first speaker of the session to come on stage, it's Seng. And Tseng will present a paper uh, named Thor, Tangible Interaction with See-Through Augmentation for Smartphones on Computer Screens. So please give a hand to Shen. Hi. <coughs> Sorry. Hi, I'm Tseng Wen Li, and here I present Thor, a collaboration with Philip Schressler, who started the project with me from the beginning, and Felix Haibach, Patty Maes, and Hiroshi Ishii from MIT Media Lab. Nowadays, we all have multiple personal computing devices, usually a smartphone in addition to a computer. We use them together every day in different situations. However, they are yet used in a very dis disconnected manner. Let's think about one example of copying music from your computer to your phone. We first need to connect USB cables, then open iTunes application, and open the folder which contains the music you want to play, and then drag and drop the music into your iTunes library, then hit the sync button to finish the job. And then you are finally good to go after removing the USB cable. We have cloud-based storage or streaming service, which makes this text a little bit, a little bit easier. But the point I like to make here is that the way we deal with the data on these devices is still limited to traditional GUI-based interactions. And we need to take care of many side tasks, which is not really relevant or re integral to the main objective we want to achieve here, which here is uh, moving the music from your computer to your phone. Without needing to go through those many side steps, what if these, these, these devices can directly interact with each other and simply, by simply placing the phone on top of a computer screen? And what if we can just slide the music from the computer to the phone like that? Our research motivation is to find a fluid mechanism that connects multiple devices and allows synergy between them. And we particularly focus on the case of smartphones and computers, as most of us both have the both already. And by mechanism here, we imply how we perceive the interaction opportunity and how we make the execution of those interactions happen when you have those devices. We realize that this is actually very simply possible by tracking the phone's position on top of a computer screen and letting the phone directly communicate with the computer. Before going into more detail, I'd like to go through the related works first. There are previous research projects and products that try to tra tackle similar problems using different configuration and different techniques. The first group of work here uses uh, handheld devices as a remote controller or viewport for a larger computer screen at a distance. Nintendo Wii U provides a controller uh, that has a touch screen, which is tracked in 3D using R sensor. And so users can use the controller as a remote viewport so that they can show information like gaming items in inventory or filling those items into the screen using simple gestures. Virtual projection and touch projector tracks the phone's position using vision-based feature tracking and allows users to control the contents on the remote screen using their smartphones. This remote configuration still limits the interaction to using the phone merely as a remote controller or remote viewport. And the tracking techniques used here are all vision-based, so they can only work when there's enough dis distance between the phone and the computer. The other group of works here explore more near-surface interaction between the phone and computer. With closer range configuration, the handheld display can function as a tracked viewport for larger, larger uh, information space, like in this map application. In pick and drop, the user can point the handle screen toward uh, the content on the larger screen and manipulate the content using pen gestures on the handle screen. Kuipers and his collaborators propose a tracking system using a projector underneath the interactive surface, so the phone can see the dotted pattern, which is invisible to human eyes, to track the position. And the light sense, sensors behind uh, interactive surface can detect the phone's location by detecting the flash, flashlight. Especially the last two techniques allowed very fast and close proximity uh, tracking of the phones on larger screens. However, the systems require special tracking and harder set setups to allow uh, reliable um, interaction between them. To allow fluid and more combined interaction between the smartphone and computer, we see that it's very indis indispensable to do near-surface interaction, 
But in the same time, we hope to make this technique deployable without the need of additional tracking hardware. So the first goal of ours is to build a system that allows this near surface interaction only with software modification. And in this near surface configuration, a smartphone can function as a see-through interface for a larger screen, which ultimately transforms the phone into a tangible magic lens. However, this is not a mere re-implementation of the magic lenses with a tangible control, but it gives a diverse and more interesting set of hybrid tangible see-through interaction, as will be presented in the following slides. We first examine what types of interaction or parameters of interaction a smartphone affords. It has physical boundaries that gives uh, tangibility, its position, orientation, and motion can be used for spatial interaction. It can also be used as see-through magic lens, and its touchscreen provides an additional separate interaction space. As we can see, these parameters, as well as with phones, other sensors will allow different styles of interaction. And we classify these interactions into four different categories, and we will illustrate each with a simple Super Mario style game, game we created. As a beginner example, we can use the phone's boundary as a physical boundary uh, that a game character can interact with, like jumping on it and like you know climbing up that high cliff. It also becomes a physical container where the character can jump in. So the phone is used as a tra transportation method, so the character can move around the big, big wall blocking in the middle. Graphical objects in the computer can slide behind or through the phone, like using a filter, so the phone can change the object's behavior or whatever other property of it. The phone can also control graphical objects based on their spatial positions. For example, it can generate an anti-gravity force field which levitates the character of the phone. Or the phone can become an anchor of a bigger graphical object so the user can have a direct control of the object, like doing puppetry. Magic Lens types, types Interaction. The phone here acts as an X-ray device, so a game player can reveal hidden paths by simply sliding the phone around. Using the phone's touchscreen or a computer mouse, it's also possible that we can um, touch or click through the phone. Lastly, the phone can be used as a separate palette, so users, users can make alteration to the digital object contained in it. In this example, the user uses pinch gesture to shrink the character to a very small size, so it can go through that small tunnel without problem. Or the character can jump into a champagne bottle, so by shaking it, we can shoot the character to that far island in Z direction. It is also notable that this near-range configuration does not only afford a variety of tangible and see-through style interactions separately, but it allows a more mixed, a mixed interaction in a seamless manner. In this pass-through filter example, the phone acts as a tangible interface where, it where its body adds motion friction to the moving obstacle in the computer screen, and at the same time, the phone also lets the user see through to, to show what's happening behind the phone. In another example, you can see the files through your phone and touch them through the phone's touchscreen, which in turn transform your phone into a physical folder, a physical clipboard, that the files you have dragging can be contained. This tight coupling of tangible and see-through style interaction, which are formally separate interaction styles, can be well realized when the interaction between the phone and the computer happens in a very close proximity. Once the graphics on the phone and the computer get aligned and quickly respond to our manual control of the phone, our strong visual motor skill picks up those cues and create a visually appealing mixed physical digital experience. For the implementation, we are using the phone's back-facing camera and color gradient on the computer screen. The camera picks up the color behind the phone's camera and determines position based on the RGB values detected. Feature-based techniques cannot be used in this configuration because the phone's camera doesn't have near-focusing capability. We do all the computation on the phone, and the benefit of doing that is that uh, there's no latency caused by the communication between the phone and the computer. But still, the problem we have here is that the entire screen needs to be covered with color gradient. So, to reduce the interference and allow more real estate for the information space, we use the masking pattern technique. 
As the pattern only needs to show where the phone's camera is looking at, we can limit the area where the, where the pattern is being displayed. And by feeding the tracked position back to the computer, the computer can update the mask position accordingly. When the phone is moving, the pattern grows bigger to compensate for a high speed and delay. When it stops, the mask shrinks and snaps onto where the camera is back. It does not only reduce the interference of the pattern, but also increase the precision of tracking. If the tracked position has an offset, the camera will pick up the boundary of the mask. By recognizing to which direction the offset happens, the system can adjust the mask position accordingly and get the tracking correct. In the video here, you can see the mask dynamically drifting to adjust its position to where the camera is. We tested and compared the tracking accuracy with and without the mask pattern technique, and we can see the masking technique provide better precision. You know, as you can see on the left diagram, a right diagram. For the test, we used MacBook Pro and iPhone 5S. The distance between the phone and the computer can be inferred by the analyzing color variance in the image, which is captured by the camera. When the phone is farther away from the computer screen, you can see more color data, delta in the image acquired. A potentially useful way of getting invis invisible tracking is to limit the color range we are using for the tracking. In this way, the pattern can be hidden in a seemingly monochrom mo monochromic surface. However, both the monitor and the camera has to have high enough dynamic range to pick up the, the, the difference. In the video, we show how it works, but for a more practical deployment, we need a very high dynamic range sensors. The calibration needs to be done once for each device pair, and it's done by simply putting the smartphone on the display and cycling through different colors. Through linear optimization, the conversion matrix from RGB to XY can be inferred, and we store this calibration setting on the computer side. So when, once a, a device is connected to a computer, the computer sends the calibration inf information to the phone so that we, do, we don't need to recalibrate whenever you connect. We like to show some of more examples. We can use it as a magnifying glass with C direction interaction, like that. Or we can put the phone, uh, we can use the phone as a spatially and context of our tool. We can open a hyperlink, hyperlink literally in a new window, not a graphical window, but a physical one. And we can also use it as a see-through mouse tool, which also can function as a physical clipboard. Conclusion. We built a system that allows near-surface multi-device interaction without additional hardware. And within this system, we explored hybrid, tangible, and see through interactions. We still have limitation uh, of using visible color pattern, and there should be latency caused by the phone's limited frame rate. But we think that this problem can be easily resolved with the advancement of the hardware technology. We believe that this is a beginning step towards having more seamless connection, and as we get more personal computing devices, different devices, there will be more demand for this fluid connection across those devices. Thank you very much. Thanks, and uh, first question is Roberto, our second presenter here. Okay, then we switch order and um, the third talk will be the second. So do you have questions? Yes, please. Yeah. Um, hi. I guess it works. Hi, uh, my name is Andrea from Songing Wang University. Yeah. I would like to know, uh, I didn't really understand the proximity part. How do you actually detect when the phone is in place, when it's in contact with the screen? How do you do that? Oh, that's a very good question. So we are combining many different sensors, like you know, we use a magnetometer and a gyroscope to determine how the phone is positioned. We also combine the color captured by the, by the phone to determine if, if this color range is uh, part of the spectrum we are using for the tracking or not. OK. Yeah. Thank you very much. Hi, Daniel Ashbrook from the Rochester Hi. Institute of Technology. I'm wondering if you've considered using um, uh, some sort of flashing pattern in order to communicate extra information to the phone from the computer, for example, to get them on the same Wi-Fi network? 
Yeah, yeah, we definitely talk, think about it. The only problem was that the display we are using has only 30 frames per sec uh, refresh rate, and so theoretically it is possible. But we are still trying to figure out how to like you know get a higher frame rate like displays and cameras. And if we have those, there's another problem of synchronizing those like frequencies. So that's definitely possible theoretically, I think. But it's sort of work in progress from our part. Thanks. Thank you.